necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to the wonderful world of wellness with Dr. Andy Mencia. This medical program heard from 7 to 7.30 each Saturday right here on WSBR 740 AM is brought to you by the Adult and Geriatric Center under the medical direction of geriatrician Dr. Andy Mencia. Good morning, Dr. Mencia. Good morning. And good morning, I'm so tired. No. Ina. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. And um, you're so tired, right? Does that bring up some morning, sort of Rachel. a subject? <laughs> a subject you want to talk about? Uh, uh, yes. Last week we were going to talk about uh, being tired, but uh, we decided we're going to leave it for this week. Um, so a lot of time, the title, I guess, on this when we publish this article on the uh, Boomer Times, it's going to be, I am fine, I'm just tired. And it's interesting, it's like saying, I am fine, I'm just dying. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> right? Is it really like that? Well, imagine how that would sound, right? It doesn't I sound right to me. I am fine, I'm just dying. I am fine, I just uh, was diagnosed with cancer. <laughs> so, being tired, it's a condition that is very common overlooked and is overlooked not only by physicians, by patients. And when one of my patients came in and the daughter said to me, oh, mom is having shortness of breath. And the mother goes, I don't have no shortness of breath. I say, mom, you're always complaining. I say, I'm not complaining of shortness of breath. I say, she's having shortness of breath, Dr. Messiah. I, you know, and the lady can talk. She has all her marbles. I say, let, let, let me, me talk, talk to you. the patient. <laughs> let me talk to mom. <clears throat> they say, well, you tell me what's going on. And she say, Dr. Messi, I just wake up tired. I have no energy. So, of course, you think being tired, are you depressed? You know, I said depression or anything like that. And she say, no, I'm not depressed. You know, I feel well. I'm happy when there's something going on that's happy. You know, I'm, I smile. I'm okay. I eat well. Uh, when I go to sleep, I sleep well. Nothing is bothering me. And, you know, I'm very happy. My kids are good with me. It's no depression. So have you been like this all your life? You know, she, she was an executive in a big company. She used to work a lot. She was a type of personality. And for her, uh, in the past eight months, it had been a constant decline. Mm. So I say, well, in this past eight months, what have you done about being tired? And she goes, Dr. Messia, what am I going to do? Go to a doctor and tell them that I'm tired. <laughs> and I say, why not? Why you wouldn't do that? And she goes, that's foolish. Why would I go to a doctor just to say that I'm tired? <laughs> And I say, well, you know, there are two types of tiredness. There's the tiredness when you work on the yard or the garden uh, or the house, cleaning the house, and the next day you feel very tired and it will go away. But if it's a tiredness that you say for eight months been going on, you have to look into it. And that's one of the problems with, with this symptom. Is, and we call it a symptom versus a sign. A sign is something that the doctor can look for. A symptom is something that you feel in your body. It's something that your body is telling you to bring out to your physician. So the problem with this symptom, as I went back after I saw my patient, I say, you know, why people are not talking about being tired? What they look at that, like <clears throat> uh, put it on third of last place of their complaint. And when I went to do my research, what I noticed is that there's so many conditions where tiredness is just one of the symptoms you're gonna find mm -hmm. associated with that. So because there are so many conditions, we feel kind of foolish going to the doctor and say, the main reason I'm here is because I'm tired. I can understand that. Yeah, so it makes sense to me also. I say, okay, that makes sense. You know, I wouldn't go to a doctor maybe, except after that I did my research, I probably would not have gone to a doctor and say, you know, I'm just tired, help me out. So if someone felt tired and they would sleep, let's say they go to bed and then they sleep and then uh, and then they get up 
and, and they still, still tired. tired. They've got That's to know there's something. That is a right? problem. Okay, what are the and problems? Going back, well, going back to my patient, it was on her heart. Uh, her heart was going in and out, atrial fibrillation. Uh, so the, uh, at some point, the heart will be beating at the normal rate, more or less. And when it goes into atrial fibrillation, the, uh, the heart is pumping like a bag of worms instead of as a synchronized orchestra where the top pump first, the bottom pump next, and the blood comes from the lung, and then the blood, or the oxygenated blood, gets sent to the rest of the body, including your brain and the muscle, and there's no need to feel tired. Uh, in her case, <coughs> when I did her electrocardiogram and I monitored her uh, for a week, we noticed that her heart at some point when she was sleeping, it was going into atrial fibrillation, mm -hmm. so she was getting no oxygen. It was moving, the heart is moving, everything is alive, but it's not functioning. So the, me the mechanical part of her heart was fine, the electrical part of her heart was not. So we went in there and we put a uh, defibrillator pacemaker. We corrected the problem so that when the heart tried to go into a rhythm that is not proper, the defibrillator will kick in and correct her so that the rate will never go too high so that the heart will continue to pump. And we solved her problem. And she's a type A personality again now at 89 years of age. That's the difference. That's a, it's a very so good point. So it was point a good point. I said, you know, that's a great topic to bring to the radio. I, you know, I say that, and I'm, a lot of my topic, as you know, is just inspired by my own patient. When I see them, I say, oh, wow, this is something we need to educate people up, you know, on. So Dr. Mencia, do you think that one of the questions a physician should ask is, are you ever tired? Yes. For a long period of time. I don't think time. doctors ever said that, asked no, me that. No, and a lot of time patients don't even want to bring it up. They feel it's like not not it's not important. You know what is he going to do for me because I'm tired? That's maybe I'm lazy. Maybe I'm you know I, I don't want to work. Maybe what have you? You know, and they start looking for excuses just like we do for losing weight or gaining weight or. Blood pressure going up, the same thing we do for headaches until the headache become a problem. So when tiredness become a problem, uh, you might be tired, but then you find somebody you want to start dating, and you don't have the energy that the person you just met has, and then you say, what, what's wrong with me? You know, I'm younger than the person I'm dating. Why, why don't I have the same energy? He or she does. I knew we were going to get into sweethearts here. Sweetheart somehow. and sweethearts sex. I need sex. Have stuff, to right? But, but wait. But, uh. I, 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 know, but wait <laughs> I want to tell everybody, because we always jump in here so fast. Dr. Andy Mencia is our guest, of course, and it's his show. It's called The Wonderful World of Wellness. We do this every Saturday morning. It's a, it's a spirited show with lots of good information. And I want you to know if you want information or you want to make an appointment with Dr. Mencia, which I highly recommend, you call 954-489-1345. Again, that's 954-489-1345. The name of his uh, center is Adult and Geriatric Medical Center. He's located on East Commercial Boulevard, a few blocks west of Holy Cross Hospital. And if you want to get onto his website and see a lot of his shows that he's already done, or I mean hear them, excuse me. Yeah, I guess you can see them too, that's right. Uh, is adultgeriatrics.com, adultgeriatrics.com. I want to pursue something that you were just saying. As you were telling me, this woman, though, she wasn't always like this. It was eight months ago. She was a type A personality. So maybe that's another thing, that if all of a sudden you're feeling tired, it's not like you, uh, some people, some people for just seem reason. always to be tired, right? Being, tired, be, being tired for no reason. Because right. if you clean the house, if you rearrange the furniture, and you get you feel tired. That's okay. That's it has an explanation, but out of nowhere you just keep feeling tired, and you can no pinpoint what's going on. You have to see a doctor and see, get evaluated. So, what are some of the other reasons that someone might feel well, that? Well, I way? had a another patient. It's a young patient. She's uh, Kivana is what thirty four, and she's saying yeah, thirty three years old, thirty four. A young girl. She came to me. She is um, from Trinidad. And 
she was taking a medication that she stopped and she was feeling very, very tired. And I say, let me do some blood tests. And I call you back. When I call her back, I send her straight to the uh, emergency room because the hemoglobin that is supposed to be 11, 12, around there, she was 5.3 by 5.4. What does that mean? She was bleeding. She has antibody that were attacking her red blood cells in this young girl. And she came to see me because she had no allergy. She came with her husband. She has a baby. And we are sitting there. And I said, Dr. Michelle, you have to help me. And she came from Miami to get checked. So you have to help me. You have to do something for me. You know, I, 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 so this is not right. And her heart rate, when she came for this young girl, 34, was like uh, 120 with an electrocardiogram. The heart is, the electrical component were fine and everything. So mentally she was anemic because she had this antibody that were fighting her own red blood cell. So she's producing antibody against herself. So of course she had, you know, she'd been treated and I saw her yesterday, she's doing better. But I told her, no, you know, we are not out of the wood. Mm. Because that's where the problem with medicine, they stop when they make a quick correction I say, we have to go back and I want to find out why you're developing this antibody. This is, people don't go around developing antibody against themselves. So we have to now find out why. So we, now we work in that part. So anemia is a big component of being tired. Condition that we normally hear out there that are very common is chronic fatigue syndrome, mm. right? Uh, fibromyalgia. And as you know, chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia, when you go to a doctor and you say, oh, I think I have fibromyalgia because I heard one of the radio show with Dr. Mencia and I think um, I have all of those symptoms. And um, there are doctors out there that say, I think you're crazy because you know, there are people that don't believe that fibromyalgia exists. There are people that don't believe that Alzheimer exists. No. So, <laughs> yes. So fibromyalgia, uh, anemia, thyroid disease. The thyroid is very important with metabolism. So if the thyroid is out of whack, then your metabolism can can be affected. So before we went on the air, I was saying is, you know, if I use my analogy of being tired, um, a car needs fuel to go from point A to point B. A human needs fuel also to execute from point A to point B. The difference is that a human, you don't just put gas and take off. You have to put all of the ingredient that will eventually become that fuel, that gas, for the body to take off. So it could be a vitamin deficiency, one of those ingredients. So if you have B12 deficiency, folic acid deficiency, magnesium deficiency, potassium deficiency, any of those electrolytes, um, or supplement can come in and, and uh, fix your problem where your body is now able to generate its own product. So it's like if you are going to make a cake and you have the dough, but you don't have the water, you don't have the yeast, or you don't have this, you know, the cake won't be the cake. <laughs> you have to have all of those ingredients so we can have the recipe complete, the, the essential ingredient. Uh, so besides thyroid disease, of course, depression. You know, a person that is actually depressed can be tired. Now, they are, having said that, there are two types of depression. One need to be treated with medication. The other one not necessarily need, need medication. It can be supplement and, and support. If we lose a loved one, we can be what we call having a reactive depression. It's an understandable depression. If you lose a dog or a cat or a husband or a wife or a mother, somebody close to you, uh, you feel that emptiness and you it's that depression you don't want to treat it with medication because it's part of the process of working out your loss. But you have the person that say, oh, you know, when I was in my 20s, I was depressed. And I've been off and on, and I was treated then with medication, and I think I need something again. So those individuals, they might have a depression that need medication to, to be fixed. But depression can present with, uh, with tiredness. The, 
they are neurological conditions. We'll go back to that. So there are people who want to just stay in bed all day. Of course. And that's part of depression. That's, that's part of the that depression. Tired, exactly. Right? They are just too depressed. And um, one way you can uh, dissect the condition a little bit further is I want to stay in bed even though somebody, my friend just called me to do the thing I love to do the most. Um, and I have no desire to do that. And even though I'm, I'm hungry and I want to get up and cook and prepare something, um, yeah, I'm so well out that no, I'm gonna stay in bed, I'm just gonna stay here. So when you don't want to do anything else and just stay in bed or lay down in the couch, you don't want to get dressed, you don't want to see your best friend, you don't want to do things you, you like, it could be a tiredness associated to the depression. So you treat the depression, the tiredness will go away. And so you go see Dr. Mencia, and he's going to help figure out right. how to do that. Exactly. Right? Because exactly. that does take that does take figuring out, and I think that's what you're so good it, at. It takes on detective and, and a good clinical workup. Yes, absolutely. You know, Dr. Mencia, there's a word, the diagnost, uh, diagnostician, diagnostician, and people don't really understand that. when they There are people who really are looking for someone to diagnose what their problems are. Absolutely. And, and, and typically... I mean, Doctors don't do that, right? They they like they, to treat a particular they thing treat, they see. Exactly. They, and a lot of times, you know, I, I get the student that rotate with me from Nova University, the future physicians. And I say, you know, if you want to be a physician, you cannot just be a diagnostician, make a diagnosis, and stop there. You cannot be a secretary. A person come in and say, I'm having this. And you say, okay, it could be the thyroid, so I'm going to send you to a thyroid specialist. It could be depression, I'm going to send you to a psychiatry. It could be anemia, I'm going to send you to a hematologist. No, you have to do your due diligence with that patient. So you don't want to be a secretary and send the patient to 20 consultants. You know, the good diagnostician will work up the patient, but then a good clinician will be a good diagnostician and then treat the patient, initiate treatment. You know, there are many physicians, they are sort of afraid and say, oh my God, no, that's psychiatric stuff, I'm not gonna do it. Or that's the uh, hematologist stuff, or the thyroid, or the diabetes, that's the specialist. Uh, you know, and I have patients with heart condition that they come to me and they say, I'm taking all of this medication is given to me by the cardiologist. And I look at the medication and I say, they are not right, they are wrong, let's fix it. Sometimes they give you two or three or four anti uh, antihypertensive and they tell you to take four, they don't tell you take a one in the morning or two in the morning and two in the afternoon. And the person is not a doctor. They take all four at the same time. And now you're feeling dizzy. Then you go to somebody else for dizziness. And then that spiral of medical care begins and you start taking medication for everything. And it's one producing two or three side effects. Those two or three side effects create two or three more spiral. And you just keep sinking down. And the answer is sometimes just to rearrange the treatment. Maybe you don't need that many medication. I have one patient that came from a, a well-renowned cardiologist in West Palm Beach. And the patient was taking a very low dose of Norvas, which is a calcium channel blo blocker. I mean, 2.5 is the lowest you can get. It's what you would give a, a baby. Uh, was giving five milligram of lisinopril, which is an ACE inhibitor. Uh, was given 25 milligram of uh, tenolol, uh, which is a beta blocker. And the person was taking all three medication in the morning and then was given by the primary care doctor antivert because he you know, was feeling dizzy. And I told him, wait a second, why don't I just, in oh, and the pulse was low and the patient was you know, very fatigued. You know. And I asked him, how long you been fatigued? He says, since I went to the hospital where well, I thought I was having a heart attack, and they say, no, it was maybe like an angina, and they gave me all these three medication for my chest pain. And then when I went to the doctor, because after the hospital stay, I'm feeling dizzy, now they gave me the antivert for the dizziness. So I told him, okay, you are not going to take the antivert. The beta blocker, which is on my list here of drugs that can produce tiredness, I said, you don't need the beta blocker because it's, it's a low dose and you're already feeling tired. 
the null bus can produce leg swelling and the person that never have ankle edema already on top of the feet, on the dorsum of his feet, he already have a little bit of pitting edema. So I took him off from that, gave him on the lisinopril, and I increased the dose of the lisinopril and said, just take that pill at night and let's see how you do. I sent one of the nurses to go to the house and monitor the blood pressure to give him the comfort level that I knew what I was doing and, and sure. nothing was going to happen to him. Sure. And uh, for his follow-up, he come in, he's great. He said, oh, Dr. Messi, oh my God, you're the best. Look at this. I don't feel tired anymore. I don't have to take any medication. I don't feel dizzy anymore. So I'm going out. I'm doing things like I used to do. So, Dr. Mencia, you brought up being tired again. So this really... It's very important, this this whole conversation. So if people are listening and they're feeling tired and there's no reason for the tiredness. Well, don't let it go. Don't let it go. Yeah. And yeah. go call Dr. Mencia at 954-489-1345. But be aware and don't be ashamed of it. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. I and, think that's uh, what people know, are. And it's like being tired. Yes, yeah, well, being tired is like that fibromyalgia and that chronic fatigue. A doctor might look at you and say, like, are you crazy? That's why you're here, because you're tired. You know, if you go to a doctor that they don't want to work you off for what you have, then you have a problem. You have to find somebody that will take care of you, that will look into that condition. Uh, there are many, many uh, neurological conditions that can present with tiredness. Uh, for example, my... Uh, Myasthenia gravis. Uh, myasthenia gravis is a condition where the body starts fighting, like we did with a young girl that was fighting the red blood cell. Here, the body is fighting the connection between the uh, neuron, which is the nerve ending, and the muscle. And there's a chemical that communicates between the nerve and the muscle called acetylcholine. So if you don't have that acetylcholine moving properly, then the muscle just get tired. And the way you know, you see the patient, if the person is high their eyes open, the eyelid start drooping on them, as if they are falling asleep. But they are not sleeping. It's just the muscle dropping on them. And if they start chewing food, they have to stop because they jaw get tired. Or if they start uh, using a screwdriver, the hand just drop. Not because the brain say, drop your hand, it's just the muscle stop doing it. And we might interpret that as a form of tiredness. The person with Parkinson's disease, you know, the condition with the dopamine dysfunction and all of that, the person can, tiredness can be one of the, uh, the symptoms. People with mini strokes, because when you have a stroke, remember the brain control your whole body. So if the dominant side of your body, you're being right-handed, and that side has been affected, you can be tired if a person has seizure disorders, epileptic attack. If you ever seen a person with epilepsy <clears throat> and you talk to them, how do you feel after, after an attack? They feel like a train run over them. They are very, very tired. So a person with epilepsy or seizure and they have those seizures at night, they will cause so tired. A person with uh, sleep apnea, Course. Because there's no oxygen when you're sleeping. Oxygen is not really coming through the lung into the blood. Then they wake up feeling very, very tired, and they can have narcolepsia. They fall asleep. So all of these conditions, lung conditions, uh, COPD, emphysema, can present with basically tiredness. And they might not be coughing. You know, the main presentation might not be a cough. Uh, a person with heart condition what we call cardiomegaly. Cardio mean heart, megaly mean enlarged. So a person with an enlarged heart. Now remember, the heart doesn't go from normal side, normal side to three times its side overnight. It's a slow process. The moment the heart starts enlarging from normal side to, uh, to, to a large size, the moment it starts, you're gonna start first feeling tired. You don't feel shortness of breath. Mm-hmm. Interesting. The first thing you're gonna feel, you're gonna start feeling tired, but we tend to overlook that. And we keep going, we keep going, then we get the shortness of breath, then we cannot walk, then we are in a wheelchair, then we get an echocardiogram, then we get diagnosed, now it's too late. So the thing to do is get diagnosed early. You know, get checked early. I had a young guy, <clears throat> you know, we have a cardiologist in the 
uh, on staff. And I have a young guy that his main problem, he came with his wife. They are very healthy. They go to life extension. They take good care of themselves. And the wife say, my husband is too tired. It's not him. Now, this came from the wife, not from him. And I said, you know, I'm going to have you see my cardiologist. He's 42, 43. He said, the cardiologist, why do I need to see the cardiologist? I, I'm okay. I don't have any heart problem. <laughs> I say, I know you don't, but I don't like the way your electrocardiogram uh, look. So I want to check you up. We did a uh, echocardiogram. And uh, his echocardiogram showed that the heart as a pump wasn't pumping properly. It started to drop the function of the heart. So if you let this go another 10, 15, 20 year on this 40 something year old guy, you're gonna have a guy that is, that, that, you know, you're gonna lose a, a working member of society to become a cripple and disabled person. And that can be prevented. Well, I think you came, made your point on this whole <clears throat> thing with being tired. I hope that anyone who is now feeling that understands it's not simple it isn't that you're just a weak I'm person i'm so energized now after That's talking right. about so tiredness i'm not trying to talk about tiredness i'm falling asleep and he's energized i mean no but it's true i i absolutely uh i love this subject because it really is a precursor to things that could be very serious i mean it's a it's very important. Absolutely. Very important don't let it go. The up. more don't you let it go, go you know. Right. Don't if, be embarrassed. If, yeah, be, just go and see somebody. Right. and if the See Dr. Mencia. And if you can't get to Dr. Mencia, then um, that, the, the, we'll figure out Get to out one of my assistants. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah, we, want, we don't want you to be tired. So Dr. Mencia, thank you again for coming. It's been a wonderful show. Um, and if you, are, if you are too tired, we are open today, so you can come in. <laughs> That's right. Saturday. So just come in and just Saturday. Think, oh, in the night <laughs> I thought it was the 4th of July <laughs> Another day is that, is that a song? Yes. I just made it up. Oh, no, that's no. a song. I mean, some of it's a yeah. song. Some, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I know, right? All these foreigners, they don't know the song. They don't know anything. I don't know where I we get I don't know people. where we are. We're too busy. <laughs> I don't know what he does. He doesn't sleep. He does other things. 954-489-1345. And the website? And the website, of course, is the adultgeriatrics.com. Thank you, Dr. Mency, as welcome. always. It was such a pleasure. Goodbye, Ina. Thank Bye. you for being here. Okay, we're going to take a break and then we're going to go do some Palm Beach Kennel uh, poker playing or something out there. Great place. Just a minute. We'll be right back. Thanks for listening to the wonderful world of wellness with Dr. Andy Mencia. Be sure to tune in each Saturday morning from 7 to 730 right here on WSBR 740 AM.